I'm going to call this video, instead of calling the Son of the Heavenly Father Christ, you would have been more honorable to say the unknown God. Instead of calling the Son of the Heavenly Father Christ, you would have been more honorable to say the unknown God. Now, of course, what inspired me to do this video, and let me start by saying all praises and glory is due to Yahweh Barshim Yahushai, Barshim Rakakwadash, for giving us this knowledge, this truth. What inspired me to do this video was I was watching this video here, which is going on live right now, premiering. Uh, this was put up by Elder Pasatar. That's his channel, GMS Declaring the End. Uh, the name of this video is The Prophecy is Right at the Door. This lesson is for the proselytes out there. Now, Elder Pastor made a statement about Acts 17 chapter where you had the Athenians, which were Israelites that lived in that city, Athens, Greece. And um, they had a devotion to the Heavenly Father, but they didn't know his name. So they put up a plaque and the plaque was entitled to the unknown God. Okay. Now, I got to thinking about, and we've been saying this off and on, I got to thinking about IUIC now. One of uh, General Nathaniel, Bishop Nathaniel, whatever his title is, one of his talking points concerning the name, I don't know if he still pushes that now, but back then he said, and I quote, that we don't have the true name of the Heavenly Father. And, and uh, he spoke about the Hebrew, which he learned from our, from our elders at 1 West 125th Street, he called it Ebonics, okay? He called it Hillbilly Hebrew. Well, he called it Ebonics. I know that for a fact. The Hillbilly Hebrew, I think that came from vocab. Anyway, the point is, General Nathaniel Agar showed disrespect to the Hebrew that we learned from our elders, King Masha, Elder High Priest Arya, Elder High Priest Yaikwab, Elder High Priest Shah, right? So based upon that, he said, General Nathaniel Agar, he said that uh, we don't have the true name of the Heavenly Father, right? So that's one of the reasons why back then they don't push the name Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the true name of the Father. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the Son, right? So that was their reason, right? Because that wasn't the real Hebrew that we learned from our elders back at 1 West 125th Street. That's according to General Nathaniel, God, Bishop Nathaniel, whatever the hell his title is, right? So why Christ? Why give uh, or why call the Son of the Heavenly Father? Why call him Christ? And their greeting is Most High and God Christ bless, or Most High and God Christ bless, however it goes, right? Why Christ? Why of all the names, all the titles you could have picked, why Christ? So that got me to the title of this video. You would have been more honorable, like the Israelites in Athens, Greece, to say the unknown God. Because they erected a plaque to the unknown God, right? You had the you had you didn't have Jesus back then, but you had Jesus. All right, the, the the Greek term Jesus was well known back then. The Israelites in Athens, Greece, they didn't name that plaque to Jesus, right? They said to the unknown God, which gave the Apostle Paul a talking point to them to preach to them Yahweh Shai, and obviously he taught them the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and then Yahweh Shai, right? So that's why I say you would, you guys at the IUIC, you would have been more honorable to say to the unknown God, since you say, you're beginning with your leader, that we don't have the true names of the Heavenly Father and His Son, which is a lie, because Acts 4 and 12 says, there's no name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So the names have been given for salvation, Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So those of you of the IUIC, you should consider that talking point. Of all the names or titles, why Christ? That goes back to the deal that they made under the 501c3. Okay? But anyway, what I'm going to do is play a part of this video where Elder Pastor is speaking about the Israelites in Athens and their devotion to the Heavenly Father, though they didn't know his name. All right, so let's check it out. This is, the, this is not the King James, so. Okay, here it is. Boom. For as I was walking, walking along in Athens, 
I saw your many shrines, the which is churches today. Go to the hood, you're gonna find what? You're gonna find churches, barbershops, liquor stores, and fucking corner stores. And that's how we know that we're the Israelites because the Bible says we have a zeal of the Heavenly Father, but not according to knowledge. Now, all those ch churches and all those different, uh, uh, you know, uh, religions that Jake is involved in shows a zeal. They're all trying to find the Heavenly Father, right? But not according to knowledge. Because when you go into their different doctrines, when you go into the, these churches, you find that they really don't know what they're talking about. You find that they are really ignorant to, you know, the, the mysteries of the scriptures. They're ignorant to the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son, etc., etc. But they do have a zeal, okay? So that proves that we're the Israelites. Because the Apostle Paul said, I bear them record, who's the them? The Israelites, that they have a zeal to the Heavenly Father, but not according to knowledge. That's recorded in Romans, the 10th chapter. Let's move on. So a church, another name for a church is a shrine. For as I was walking along, I saw your many shrines and one of your altars because we have a we have we all have a zeal toward the most high but not according to knowledge yep. so the Athenians believed in a god but they didn't know the name of the god right they believed that they were created by the most high but they didn't know the name they said had his so by them putting on the plaque to the unknown god they were more they were more uh how you say they were more honest right because they, if, if you don't know the name, then you're going to put, that's just common sense. You're going to put to the unknown power, the unknown God, because you don't know the name, right? But General Nathaniel Alaga says, we don't know the name. And that's what he used to say. I don't know if he still, I believe he still holds true to that because they simply, even though here and there, they mentioned the name Yahweh, like at the last Passover, he mentioned the name Yahweh in that film that he did emulating the movie 300. You hear the the, uh, the term Yahweh in that film. He mentions it, but does he stress it? Does in in his lessons in his teachings? No, he doesn't. They keep saying Most High God and Christ. They, you know that's what they keep pushing. Case in point, when they did the Cadence m March at the Barclay Center in Brooklyn, uh, what was the what was the uh, what what would what, what were they reciting at the Cadence March? Right? What were they reciting? They were saying, "Who's uh, somebody would say, who's the king? What was the callback? Christ is the king. That's what they would say. So it's evident, I'm making the point that it's evident they're not pushing the name of the true name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And one of their strongest reasonings is we don't have the name. We haven't been given the name yet. But why Christ? Why, why put the title of Christ? That's the, that's the, you know, that's the point. At least the Israelites in Athens, they said to the unknown God. You know, they were more legit in saying to the unknown God than a group that says we don't have the name, but still has Christ in their title. It's disingenuous. It's phony. It's phony. <laughs> inside joke. It's phony and it's disingenuous. Okay. These guys are being hypocrites. Okay. Let's move on. In had this inscription on it. To an unknown God or to the unknown God. We know it's a God up there. We don't know his name and, you know, so forth. So that was an honest accession. That was an honest accession by the Israelites in Athens to the unknown God. We don't know his name. So we're going to put, we know there's a God there. We, we know there's a higher power. We acknowledge that, but we don't know his name. So we're going to honor him. By putting a plaque to the unknown God, right? That was their, their 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 form of honor, which was off, you know, really idolatry, right? It was off, but nevertheless, it shows their honesty. Okay, at least they acknowledged there was a higher power, and they didn't know his name, so they put to the unknown God. They wanted to show reverence, right? But again, when you look at the IUIC. The head leader, he said, we don't have the true names of the Father and the Son, but yet he calls upon Christ and Most High God. Right? <laughs> so, 
what I'm showing you is hypocrisy, and uh, this group is is uh, disingenuous among the many flaws in that group. Okay, that's just hypocrisy. You would have been like the title of this video states. You would have been more honorable to say to um, uh, uh, Israel United and the unknown God. Let me say it again: Israel United which you'd be going off anyway, because the only ones that's going to be united is the elect of the nation of Israel. But that's another talking point. But you would have been more honorable to say Israel united in the unknown God, seeing that you say we don't have the name of the Father and the Son. We don't know the names. That's what you say. The Bible says different, but that's what you say. Plus, we were taught those names by our elders, right? At 1 West 125th Street, which the, the head guy of IUIC was very much a part of that school. How do I know? Because I was back there as well. You know, we came up together in this thing of ours, in this ministry. Okay? So, just a little thought to think about. Anyway, let's move on. This God, I'm reading it verbatim, whom you worship without knowing is the one I'm telling you about. He's mm -hmm. saying, I'm telling you about Yahweh Shai. I'm giving you his name. The Most High, Yahweh's son's name is Yahweh Shai. So Which is probably one of the reasons, extra, using extrapolation is probably one of the reasons why the Heavenly Father put the Spirit on the Apostle Paul to go to those individuals. Because even though they were simple, they were simple in their honesty. Or, they, you know, in their simplicity, they were honest. Okay, they had the plaque. The plaque said, to the unknown God. And that gave the Apostle Paul a talking point, a platform that he could work with to teach them the Heavenly Father's name and his son's name. And to teach them about the Heavenly Father, a proper understanding of the Heavenly Father, and especially his only begotten son. Which at the time, that was the, that was the hot button topic at that time. Because Yahweh Shai, not too long before that, Yahweh Shai had, uh, he was uh, crucified and then resurrected and went back to the Father. Okay, now the majority of them probably didn't listen, the Israelites in Athens, but a few of them did. Okay, a few of them were converted by the Apostle Paul's, uh, uh, you know, his speech. As a matter of fact, let's go to Acts 17. All right, Acts 17. And see, look at the subheading, Paul at Athens, right? Uh... So here's the sermon, right? Then stood Paul in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I pass by and behold your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Then he goes on to say, The heavenly Father made the world, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship. Okay. Uh, let me jump down to okay here's the proof that Paul's sermon at Athens wasn't wasted because on the individuals that were listening to him that were listening to him many of them didn't accept his sermon right but some did here's the proof Acts 17 and 32 and when they when they heard of the resurrection of the dead some mocked, and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. These are the same individuals that were worshiping the Heavenly Father under the, the name, the Unknown God, that had erected that plaque to the Heavenly Father, the Unknown God, which pro provided a talking point for Apostle Paul, right? So Paul departed from them, howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed. See? See? So those those individuals, they they those individuals were honest. Remember, before that, before Apostle Paul came on the scene and taught them about the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, they were worshiping the Heavenly Father under the name the Unknown God. See? And then the Apostle Paul, the Lord put the Spirit on him to go to them. They were living in Athens. The Apostle Paul or the Heavenly Father put the Spirit on the Apostle Paul to go to them and teach them about the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, beginning with the names of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, right? So they believed, okay? Howbeit certain men clave unto Him and believed, among the which was Dionysus, the Areop 
Areopagite, the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. See? Now, before that, they were worshiping what? The unknown God, right? So that, there's the proof. So, like I said, man, it would be an, it would have been more honest for that group, IUIC, based upon what their head leader said. We don't have the true name of the Father and the Son. Well, it would have been more honest. It would have been more honorable for you to have named that group Israel United in the unknown God. Okay? But once again, that shows your hypocrisy. And that shows, you, uh, you, you know, you're being disingenuous by putting the title of Christ. Of all the titles, why Christ? That's the question. Why Christ? Huh? <laughs> so hopefully you were edified onto the next one.